Oh no, if only there was something I could do to prevent this. So Combat Rogue has a problem. The rotation is complicated, it scales and changes often, and ultimately it really feels crafty by design. And there's not all that much information on what you should actually be doing. Simonize has a guide on Combat Rogue, but it doesn't cover all the specifics of the rotation, and it simply says try not to let all your buffs slash debuffs fall off at once. I like to make really unique content, so I won't be covering anything that he said in his video, and this video will primarily be focused on what that exact phrase means. Try not to let all your stuff fall off at once. Let's go ahead and start with an example of a fight where you start without popping any of your cooldowns or lust. So this could be a typical trash pull, or just something where you'd want to save those things for another time. The only thing that you'll have is your permanent raid buffs, which include improved Icy Talons or improved Wind Fury Totem. This is the most important buff that you need to have for your rotation, and it makes it really hard to practice the rotation without it, so you can't really practice this on a target dummy, unless you have a Death Knight friend who just wants to stand next to you. The increased attack speed directly affects your energy regeneration by increasing the number of offhand attacks that you're doing, which can cause combat potency procs, which will give you more energy. Alright, so going into combat, we do a 1 point slice and dice into a 1 point expose. It's more right DPS to do the expose first, but it's better for you personally to do the slice and dice first. So we got our essentials up, let's go ahead and build up to a rupture and pump out some damage. Okay, we got that rupture up, and oh man, slice and dice and expose are already falling off. Alright, let's refresh those real quick, 1 point each, and oh wow. You see the problem? Everything is about to fall off at once now. This is a trap that tons of rogues fall into that keep them from doing the highest amount of damage. And it's hard to break out of these habits because none of these things are inherently wrong on paper. It's not like a one-point expose or slice and dice is inherently bad. One-point expose is actually the most efficient with the glyph of expose, and a five-point rupture is fantastic for damage. But only prioritizing the most efficient things will often put you in a position where your overall uptime suffers, which is why I'm going to teach you guys the method that I use to visualize everything here. So first of all, there are no hard rules whenever it comes to combat rope. It's not like you'll ever want to do a certain ability with a certain amount of combo points. It's all relative to each other. Even though certain spenders with a certain amount of combo points can give you a higher number or a more efficient output, it's not like those things are inherently better than anything else to do. Uptime is king. My second tip is to memorize the duration of your spenders in relation to the number of combo points you invested in it. And this ties into the third and most important tip, is that your big spender durations are not relative to themselves. It's very easy to get caught up in visualizing these big spenders as big or small relative to the number of combo points that you invested in them. But Rupture will always be smaller than the other two, even with the Glyph of Rupture. Slice and Dice will always be in the middle, and Expose, running the Glyph of Expose, which you should be if you're exposing, will always be the longest given the same number of combo points. So a two-point Expose will last longer than a five-point Rupture, even though this is a very big Rupture and a very small Expose. The rupture is smaller in terms of actual time duration. Does that make sense? And if you want to maintain your spenders and have big damage ruptures rolling all the time, you need to distribute your combo points according to those rules, regardless of their actual efficiency. So even though higher combo point slice and dices are the most efficient and give you a higher amount of uptime on slice and dice itself, it doesn't matter if it costs you uptime on the other two spenders, because keeping uptime on all three is what is most important. I like to think about everything in blocks of 10 seconds, because that's how long it takes you to build up to 5 combo points and do a spender without any buffs. The best way to think about this is your rupture has 11 seconds left and you want to maintain a big 5 combo point rupture. You need to start building those combo points right now, and that means that you need to have a larger duration than those 10 seconds on your slice and dice and expose armor, or else you're going to have to refresh them while you're building combo points to rupture, which you won't be able to do. And it's not very likely that you have more than 10 seconds on those spenders, considering 10 seconds ago you just put up this big rupture, and so you weren't able to build all the way up to 5 and do expose or slice and dice yet. Odds are, like most combat rogues, you refresh those with 1 point spenders after putting up that rupture, and they will be expiring right as the rupture is expiring. And in order to maintain uptime on the other two spenders, you'll have to delay that big rupture. In order to avoid this, you have to plan ahead. Right after you put up that big 5 point rupture, you now have one 10 second window to do the other two spenders. You need to make them last longer than another 10 second window, so they have to be above 10 seconds. That way, you will have the second 10 second window to build back up to the 5 point rupture and do it again. In order to achieve this, you're going to need 3 or more points in Slice and Dice and 2 or more points in Expose Armor. Now if you notice, a 5 point rupture lasts 21 seconds, a 3 point Slice and Dice lasts 23 seconds, and a 2 point Expose lasts 24 seconds. Those are all extremely similar durations, so will this cause a major problem and result in them all running out at the same time, which is exactly what we want to avoid? No, because you're not casting them all at exactly the same time. They're going to be delayed, but still take around 20 seconds to fall off. And what is going to delay them is you building up points with Slice and Dice, and you pooling energy until the debuff falls off, and then you need to refresh it again. If you've ever watched somebody literally juggle or spin plates in real life, you know that they don't spin all three plates immediately at the beginning. They put them on the sticks, and then they spin one, and then they pick up another stick, and then they spin another, and then they pick up another stick, and they spin another. That's exactly what we want to be doing with our spenders. So that way, 
by the time that the first one runs out and we have to spin it, the next one has a little bit left. So that way we have time to spin the first one before we visit the second one again, and retroactively the third one. If you're able to get into this rhythm, it's very hard to mess up, but it's not necessarily a recipe for success. You still need to improvise and account for what's going on in the fight and how it could be affecting your attack speed and cooldowns and your uptime. A good example of this is the Big Bang on Algalon. You need to account for the fact that you won't be hitting the boss for a little bit. Adrenaline Rush, Blade Flurry, and Killing Spree all cause you to attack more, which can cause you to have more energy than usual. I like to invest these extra combo points in Expose, because Expose has a massive window that you can extend way beyond 10 seconds, whereas investing extra combo points into Slice and Dice to build it up to 5 will only result in a total 32 second duration, which is 3 10 second windows. Whereas if you invest those extra combo points into Expose, you can build it up to 5 combo points, which will last 42 seconds, which is 4 10 second durations, which is 2 full ruptures before you have to refresh it again. A 5 point slice and dice will just fall off while you're building up the second rupture, whereas the Expose will last the entire duration of both ruptures and then allow you to refresh it again at the end. If you're unlucky with combat potency procs, or you find yourself energy starved because you have to spam tricks the tank on Vizax or something like that, you can drop down to a 4 point rupture just to buy yourself some more room, then maintain the other two and make it a little bit more comfy, which even happens to me from time to time. There's no shame in doing it, and it's not even necessarily a DPS loss, it could be a DPS gain depending on the situation. It's all about just knowing what's appropriate to do. For instance, it's fine to do a 4 point rupture, but if you do a 1 point expose right after that, well, they're both going to pop off at exactly the same time, and then you're going to have to do the same thing later. And because of the lack of wiggle room, this is an unsustainable rhythm. Now, I just want to be really clear about something. There is literally zero math to back this up. I'm not simonized. I do not have a calculator brain. This is just something that I do that anecdotally results in me having way higher DPS and way more uptime than just winging it. And it also allows me to have a 5-point rupture rolling pretty much the entire fight, which I like. The biggest difference for me came from memorizing those spender duration. You're going to find yourself in a hard spot from time to time, and knowing exactly how many points are needed to avoid everything falling off at once is the key between a good rogue and a bad rogue. Many bad or average rogues will just throw up a one-point expose after a big rupture and think, well, that was a one-point expose, I'm getting 12 extra seconds of expose from the glyph of expose, this is very efficient, and then whenever they fall off at the same time and they're not able to properly refresh them, they'll lose rupture uptime or expose uptime. When you're starting on a boss, your opener really depends on what cooldowns you have available and whether or not you want a killing spree, but the amount of excess energy you get from them is how you should calculate exactly how you're going to put yourself into this rhythm so that whenever they fall off you're not just stranded. If you have any uptime left on your spenders before it's time to refresh them, it can be a good idea to pool energy but it can also be a good idea to just override them anyway. Like if you have 4 seconds left on an expose and 13 seconds left on a rupture, go ahead and wait for full energy and then refresh the expose so that way the new expose is refreshed at a later frequency. However, if your rupture only has 7 seconds left, then you should just override the 4 seconds of expose that way you can build up to a 5 point rupture again sooner. To the untrained eye, not being efficient and refreshing something that still has duration left on it seems like the opposite of a good play. But whenever you realize the overwhelming majority of your damage comes from just literally having everything up all the time, it's actually fine to waste resources here as long as the end goal is met. Because our resource generation is semi-random, there's no way to calculate the most optimal play. You just have to do the best with what you got. Let me know if you disagree or agree with this, and let me know if you have your own methods for dealing with the combat rogue rotation, or how you like to visualize it in the comments. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so we can grow the channel and increase the sweatiness of other gamers worldwide. And if you watch this video but you don't have a rogue, well, you should get to leveling one. And the best way to do that is the rested XP add-on, which you can get from the link in the description. It's my referral link, but it costs the same whether you use it or not, so you might as well use it. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys later.